Hello everyone, and welcome to another Flash Black anime review. Why is it Flash? Well, because we're flashing black, we're flashing back when I'm black. Uh, today, as a continuation from one of my other videos, I will be doing a review of Volume 2 of Negma by Ken Uh, I kind of forget the format I did from the last one, but I guess I'll just go read the summary off the back and kind of go in chapter by chapter and give you a brief summary and kind of what's, uh, I guess changed or hasn't changed or kind of improved from the first volume. Uh, so without further ado, let's start the show. Uh, this is number two. The back says, Knowledge can be dangerous. For a ten-year-old teacher, Neggy Springfield, and all and his all-girls class, it's time for final exams. If his students manage not to end up with the lowest scores in the school, the principal has offered to make Neggy an official teacher. To prepare for the test, the class takes a trip to the school's library island. But this is no quiet place to study. Stone golems, traps, and secret passageways are the norm throughout the enormous library building. With all these distractions, can Negi's class hope to climb out of the cellar, both academically and literally? And the back of the character featured on the back is number 16, Vikia Saki. I guess I'll get more into her later on. Uh, so, uh, Volume 1 was a really good kind of way to like actually start everything off. Very uh, light-hearted, for the most part, but kind of still kind of touching on a few little serious things. This one kind of bring the shenanigans back up to their you know full potential as they were in the and they were as they were in the first volume but uh there are there are a couple of uh little serious issues uh brought up for some of the characters uh throughout this volume too as it as it focuses on uh uh Characters like uh, the class rep and uh, not both Uchisame, but uh, uh, mainly just uh, the class rep probably gets the most serious uh, type of storyline here. Uh, but let's go. Uh, so uh, the first period is kind of you know they're all going to school and Negi gets the uh, and the, the Shizuka Sensei is told that. Uh, Negi has to, uh, she's told to give something to, uh, Negi. Um, uh, sort of like, a, a, a his final test, and he reads, and it's all like, of course, uh, it says, Dear negi if 2A doesn't finish in last place, we'll be made an official teacher. Um, I'm not quite sure how, uh, Japanese teacher hiring things work out in Japan as opposed to here in America, but from what I understand, uh, teachers, all teachers are given something of, like, a probationary period or something like that, kind of very similar to what Negi's already in, where they're kind of employed for a year or something like that, uh, like a temporary employment, and if they manage to do well, they are hired permanently or, you know, officially, it's like part of the idea of official teaching style, all of their still considered a teacher during their little probationary period, it's kind of like, oh, you know, we're kind of going to see how you do for this set amount of time, see what happens, if we don't like what you do, we let you go, and if we do like what you do, we keep you on, uh, sort of thing. Because teachers are very, very highly respected in, in Japan, as opposed to here in America, where they treat like shit. Uh, and so, uh, with Negi, this being part of his training, that is a really, really big deal, uh, because if he doesn't do well here, then his whole listening career gets flushed down the toilet pretty much. Uh, so, Negi doesn't quite realize, though, how, exactly how bad his class is. Uh, and so he proposes, you know, they do a, like a, a whole study session, and of course, one of the girls uh, uh, represents a game called Baseball Junkin, which is roughly the equivalent to academic strip poker. Uh, basically what happens is they give you a word, uh, they, they give you a word to spell or whatever, I guess, uh, from Japanese, you spell it in, in English, or you say it in English. Uh, and so, I guess you're supposed it's like, uh, miss the word and you lose an article of clothing from what it says. Uh, baseball junkie that's like strip poker. Lose clothing for every answer. Okay, lose clothing for every answer you miss. And of course, our five Baka Rangers are already uh, mostly naked. So, what are you gonna do? And that and 
those five apparently are the, are the ones that pull down the class every single semester, uh, every single uh, trimester, semester, whatever the hell it is. Uh, so Negi, of course, he's like, okay, I'll use magic to kind of uh, uh, increase their intelligence for like uh, 72 hours or whatever, and as soon as it hits him for it, not just because of the side effects, because like like downsides that we dumb as a rock for like, for, a, for a month afterwards. Uh, but as soon as it kind of harps on him for saying, you know, if you're the teacher and you're resulting to using magic to help us, or you know, uh, then what does that kind of say about your confidence in us, and what does that kind of say about uh, how about the confidence that we should have in ourselves, kind of, you know, like. And that's, that. I guess that's a very, uh, like, Negi doing this, it does really show that he is a, he's a little kid, that he is, like, willing to resort to using magic for something like this. Like, I, there's no state of thing, there's no personal gain or anything like that. Uh, so, uh, but this was a very, very, you know, like, what, this is really something a little kid would do. Instead of, oh, you know, let's study, study, study as hard as we can, it's like, no, let me use magic and make them super smart for, for like three days or so, and then then everything will be perfect. So they'll be able to take their test and everything. And that also gets into like the whole ethical business of you know using magic for cheating, which kind of was touched on a little bit in the uh, last volume, the very last chapter, where he was going to use magic against that dodgeball team, but uh, did it. Uh, so. Uh, and so Negi decides to completely seal off his magic for the next three days. Uh, and, uh, the girls kind of get, uh, heads up in the bathroom that, uh, if the next, like, uh, Tony says, uh, the next class that gets placed at last, that gets last placed on the next final exam, uh, the class will be broken up, uh, and, like, apparently on top of that, the especially bad ones will be sent back a grade. So they'll have to go through elementary school. And Mahor Academy is an elevator school, which means that uh, it is an academy consisting of a elementary, middle, high school, and a university level. And it's a school that you don't need, like, you take, and you take an exam to get into the school, I guess, uh, or something like that. Uh, and it's, it's different from regular Japanese high schools where you actually have to test, have to take an entrance exam, to get into, like, the next, uh, grade, uh, in the elevator school, it's, uh, like an elevator, it just passes you on to the next grade, kind of like how we do here in America. Uh, but for a school besides, I imagine, it's ridiculously expensive, so, uh, good luck paying for it. Uh, so, that gives, uh, the girls kind of an incentive to go to, la to go to, to the library. Uh, one of the girls, Yui Ate, the number four in the class, she... Uh, recommends uh, looking for this magic book uh, in Library Island, um, and it says that if you read the and she says if you read the whole thing, it makes you super smart. And as soon as kind of, like everyone kind of like brushes it off, but as soon as all like wait no, Maggie's a wizard, so that means there is magic. So that why can't there be the whole magic book thing? So. She's determined to go through with this thing, and all the, the Rocker Rangers uh, decide, and Negi decides to go through with this and find this magic book to make them super smart. Uh, and just to let you know why it's called Library Island, this is why. It's an entire island specifically for the library. Uh... So they go through this whole thing in, in, in the process, and Negi discovers that what uh, some of his students lack in their intelligence, they more than make up for in their academics. Uh, Mikie Sagi is a member of the Rinse Gymnastics team, so when she gets into a dangerous situation, she uses the gymnastics team to kind of save herself. Uh, Kufe and Kaede Nagase are both uh, martial artists, apparently, uh, and so they handle themselves pretty adequately as well. Library Island is full of traps and everything, I guess, to make sure no one steals from the books there because they're extremely old and rare and valuable books. Uh, probably something similar to, I guess, like the library, the Great British Library, I think it is, from Read or Die. Uh, but it's during this that Asuna finds out what Negi uh, 
has done that he's sealed him he sealed off his powers uh, so that he's not tempted to use magic to uh raise their intelligence at all but he's kind of like oh you guys are going and looking for this magic book type thing so uh it kind of it, it kind of it kind of I, I, I kind of I don't kind of want to say hypocritical but you know desperate times call for desperate measures so they continued onward through the library and they come across these uh stone golems here uh and uh they you know it's one of those it's kind of like a weird uh twister type thing where they have where like the you know like on the, they have the twister board they're on the uh the little tiles little circles they're uh, japanese character uh, and so they have to um spell out uh different words uh and uh eventually uh something <laughs> and something uh that uh Asura makes a, <laughs> they make a mistake and so it gets them uh the stone golem like breaks the board and sends them falling down to their to their uh they're their seemingly death but we all know that you know not actually going to happen uh and so basically what happens is that the five idiots get and Negi, uh, along with Konika, get stuck at the very bottom, bottom, bottom level of the library, which is apparently this weird type of heaven or whatever. And I'm, and it's not quite explained how this has, you know, managed to sustain itself and uh, under so under all this uh, stone and whatnot, but magic maybe. Uh, so, that's that, uh, uh, and so, uh, without the five of them, uh, the, uh, as when Ayaka gets told of this, that Ayaka's a class rep, uh, she says that everyone needs to, like, really pull their asses out, pull their heads out of their asses and buckle down and study, because if the five of them aren't able to come back, uh, like, Basically, if the five of them get zeros, uh, it'll pull their class average down to, like, probably last place again. Uh, uh, so, uh, it'll, it'll be pretty bad. But the Baka Rangers decide to, uh, actually buckle down and start studying and, you know, get some, uh, R&R &R a little bit while, uh, while doing so. Uh, but while they're still relaxing and studying, uh, Negi, uh, the, I mean, the, the stone golem thing comes back and, uh, tries to protect them, and Negi, uh, tries to use magic to protect the students, but forgets that he sealed his powers off, and kind of ish, expo almost exposes himself, uh, and by this time there's only, like, one day left until the final exam, the, the exam day. Uh, Long story short, they manage to escape the golem and get the book back. Uh, and uh, they're they're like they run up like this weird spiral staircase where like every point there's like this uh, there's this like door with a uh, question on it, kind of like uh, uh, like a quiz question or kind of like that, and they have to like answer it in order to get past. And just holding the damn book makes them super smart. Negi had said that. Uh, earlier, when they found the book, they did that. It was the golem regarding the book. He said that uh, raising uh, intelligence was like it was it's like a legitimate, legitimate, super magical item, and that raising intelligence was like just uh, the smallest bit of its power. Like just holding the damn thing and simulates their brain powers so they know this shit. Uh, so they get through all the test questions, but they and they get to the elevator, uh, and it says they are overweight, over capacity. So their first um, <laughs> their first option is you know let's just let's just lose our clothing, <laughs> and then it's like no we're still overweight, and one of them's like anyone got any scissors we'll cut our hair, and so Negi decides to get off himself and. Uh, Challenge the golem despite not having any magic to use for himself. Uh, Asuna, though, grabs him and throws the book at the golem, sacrificing their 
education and everything, or their, their, uh, cheat book, effectively, but that raises them, you know, that get rid, gets rid of the extra weight somehow and allows them to, you know, go up, and it also knocks the golem down the wall, wall staircase, so. Uh, The girls race back to the school, and they're all exhausted, uh, and have to take their tests in a, in a, te in a completely different room, uh, and they're all exhausted. By this time, though, Negi is finally able to use magic again, so he uses a kind of refreshing spell on them to, uh, increase, I, not, like, they kind of make, it kind of refreshes them, makes them feel alive, energetic, and everything, so that they can take their tests, uh. And, uh, all hope seems lost when they, it seems that they are, uh, at the very bottom of the, of, of it all once again, and Negi's like, well, that's the end of that, I have to go home now, because, you know, I failed and everything. Uh, but all the girls come and try to stop him and make sure, that, like, we don't care, because you did our best, don't go and everything. But, uh... It turns out that the school headmaster hadn't quite graded their uh, the Bach Rangers tests yet, and so the their combined uh, test points, uh, along with the other the, the score for their for the rest of their, for the other uh, girls in their class, I'm not doing that math in my head, uh, but that combined with the other with the rest of the class managed to push them to, uh, number, two, number one in the entire, uh, high school division, I guess. Uh, and so, uh, and so that makes Negi the official teacher. Uh, and that's, like, the first, uh, let me see how many chapters is that. Uh, that takes up, that takes up, uh, one, two, three, four, five. That takes up five chapters, uh, of this month. Uh, the next, uh, chapter, the 12th period, those were 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. The 12th period focuses on Jisame, on, uh, student number 25. Yes, number 25, Jisame Hasegawa, who is... Jisame can best be described as that student you have in your class. And everyone in the world has had this one person in all of their classes, that person who always sits in the back, who always secludes themselves from everything else the class is doing, who always just kind of sits there and minds their business, but you can see in their eyes, it's written all over their face for the most part, that they, like, they hate everyone in this room, and they're just kind of, like, nitpicking and cynically commenting on everyone else in, in the entire class. You know, like, they're not outwardly mean to you, but they really don't want to have much of anything else to do with any anyone at all in the entire classroom. And that's from Uh, uh, so, uh, Tasame's main deal is that, uh, she is completely, uh, this kind of chapter focuses on, it's kind of like, just kind of like an, an introductory chapter to her, uh, but it shows that she does not like her class at all. And it's it basically, because like, class 2A is like the rowdiest, most energetic, most crazy class of the entire damn school. So she is like the only normal one, pretty much, in their entire class. And then she's like, oh my god, I'm surrounded by idiots every single waking moment of my life. Because in Japanese schools, you stay, uh, you are with one class, all the entire day, and the teachers are the ones that rotate uh, classrooms unless you have, like, gym, or, like, a lab, or some other type of class like that. Uh, but, so, there's no, like, seeing other people in different classes. No, you are stuck with the, with the same damn people your entire school day, and it might actually work. It I think uh, sometimes you can be stuck with the same homeroom. Uh, with the same class, because it, it, it's determined by your homeroom class, so you can be, uh, like, your homeroom class determines, like, who you see the re for the rest of the day, the rest of the semesters and everything. And you can well be with that same class every year in, like, middle and high school, so, uh, 
with a class like that, I guess anybody would be a bit uh, overwhelmed. Uh, but so she leaves class early because uh, everyone's like, oh, we're going to throw a party to welcome Nagi and everything. And she's like, uh, no, screw you. And uh, she's like, this class has been strange from the beginning. Going all the way back to first year, there's all these exchange students coming in one after the other. Underage ones that, like, they're, uh, like, like we're some big preschool. And then uh, one girl, like, like, and that girl, she's obviously a robot. I mean, how can no one else notice? Look at her. Uh, you, uh, you look at her and say robot, she's gotta be, and this is uh, her. Uh... Right here, the robot girl, I guess. Apparently, yeah. Why am I saying apparently? Because I already know that they're, I don't want to disclose, but yeah, this is the robot girl, and these are all like the underage or overage and too tall and too short type of people that just don't like liking classroom and everything, so she's all bitchy and frustrated about that. And then, like, the big thing uh, on her on her hate list is like the child teacher. Which, actually, I'm glad they do have a student in this classroom that really is questioning, like, why do we have a 10-year-old little boy, uh, this 10-year-old little foreign child, teaching us, like, that has to violate, like, several child labor laws. Well, I mean, I guess since Negi is a wizard, and this is, like, official training for him, I guess there's some, like, legal loophole they're going through and everything, or I guess maybe Interchange just has to be qualified enough to teach with your age notwithstanding. But generally, I would also be thinking, why are we having, why are we being taught by, like, this little ten-year-old kid? Like, why? You know, unless I, like, because cause I'm really, I need some, like, concrete evidence that you have, like, a PhD, or at least, like, a master's degree in whatever the hell subject you're teaching if you're only, like, 10 or 12 years old. I mean, shit, I can't trust that crap, but I, I'm glad that someone did, uh, uh, kind of raise that issue. Uh, and so, Tisali storms back to her room, and we discover a very shocking secret about her, uh, and that... She is not as the normal as she appears to be. Same is, in fact, a web idol. Uh, web idols are pretty much like models in the real world, only they do all of their modeling and whatnot online. Uh, it's that whole idol thing Japan is crazy with. Uh, just Google the word, like, idol, and I guess you'll explain it yourself. Uh, so she has, like, this whole website and blog just dedicated to herself, and she is under the alias of Net Idol Chiyu. Uh, and she's writing all this horrible crap about Negi, and, uh, like, trying to, like, gain, like, the sympathy. She's like, but the teacher of my class is a pervert. He made eyes. Chiyu. Like, all the people are responding, like, oh my god, that's horrible. Look, where's the bathroom? Let me beat the crap out of him and all that shit. And she's, she's just loving it. She's like, oh, thank you all, I have a new costume for you. And so what she does is she just, uh, she takes, uh, she dresses herself up in different costumes and she kind of photoshops the, the images and kind of like, I guess, clear up her face if she has any zits and like enlarge her breasts and make her proportions perfect uh, for her online viewers. Uh, and kind of, <laughs> and then just, uh, and then just kind of dominates the, the, the web idol charts or whatever, so, uh, it, it, and it, it, this just makes Chisabe almost as crazy as the people that she is, so, uh, against being around when you really think about it, uh. The, the quiet girl with the double life, you know, I, I guess that's nothing new, really, I mean, we've seen that a lot in our popular culture and everything, but, like, to do it like this is actually really kind of funny, and it, it makes sense for a class like this, I guess, and then she turns around and Negi's there, and she's all like, oh, god damn it, and then he's like, he's, he's like, she's like, it's all ruined, He'll tell everyone I'm as crazy as they are with my friends and you're in the buddy suit for instant glory. I'll laugh their butts off like, welcome to crazy group 2A. 
<laughs> and I love her reaction. It's like I have to banish. If the only thing left, I'll but I'll but I'll kill him. My final revenge it is sharp as wood or blunt. Blunt is good too. But so she has this like giant carrot for her bunny girl outfit. She's ready to like crack him over the head with it. And Negi's all like, Oh, look at these pictures, you're so good. Like he sincerely means it and everything and uh, the, like, the main, you know, because all these people, you know, the secret identity thing. <laughs> the problem is, is, of course, her glasses. She's doing the Clark Kent thing, where it's like, here I am, just a regular high school girl, just on a hot spot. But here I am, that I don't see you. Oh, love me, love me, love me, kind of, kind of thing. And I'm just like, mmm. Yeah, no. But then again, Ken Akamatsu is no stranger to using this at all, because uh, in his previous manga, Love Hina, this was what separated, this was Naruto Sagawa's kind of shtick, too. Uh, where at her cram school and everything, she was the girl with the big glasses and the big braids and everything, who was super smart and everything. Well, at home, she was glasses-free, the hair flowing and looking all beautiful and the shoujo and all that shit that we love. Uh, uh, so, and that was Ken Akamatsu's whole thing, too, with with the character creation of, uh, with Chisame, uh, Chisame and Asuna are directly based off of, uh, Naruto Sagawa, and both kind of take, uh, uh, Naru's, uh, aspects and personality traits into their own character. Asuna gets Naru's kind of default tsundere tendency for the most part, but Chisame is, is a little bit different. Chisame gets, uh, Naru's kind of nerdy physical appearance. Like, she gets that whole kind of glasses girl with the hair tied and kind of, like, I like the food student. And I, uh, from the last chapter, where's Sasame fall on the, on the, uh, rating scale? Uh, so Sasame ranks, uh, she ranks, uh, she's definitely not in the middle, but she is... I would guess from this start, if the blocker, if the blocker are all on the, the on like this side of the edge, and mostly everyone is in like this kind of bracket wall, you have like, like okay, so it's separated into it from it goes from one to seven hundred and thirty-seven, and Same falls right around the five hundred bracket, I guess. So I guess she does like C, like low C work. I guess, uh, uh, but so she does have that kind of geek nerdish appearance to her. I guess it's a typical geek kind of thing. Uh, but online she has that whole uh, exuberant, playful idol type persona that you know everyone just gets up like handy. Like, oh, she's so cute and innocent. We could never hate you. When she's all like, "You bastards, worship the ground I walk on. Kiss my feet, Daddy. Kiss me now." And she, she, and she just loves, it. she's just loving every minute of it. So, uh, but when that was, and I thought that was, and that, that was a very good decision to make. Uh, so Negi steals her glasses, and she's still in the bunny suit. And he's like, oh, look, today is, today is almost as beautiful as you are. Like, he's really, really complimenting her. Like, Negi really likes Sami, not in, like, a romantic way, but he likes her. Like, he's definitely, she, he's definitely, she's definitely one of the students that's, like, caught his eye, like, I really like this girl. Like, she is a very interesting person to be around, and I really want to bring more out of her type of thing. You know, like, you have those seats with, like, okay, I want to kind of improve on this student kind of thing and make, you know, you know, kind of help them along and all that shit, you know? And that's what Nike kind of does with Sane. And he inadvertently, he, de he brings her to uh, the party, uh, and everyone's all like, oh, wow, Sensei, you got a Playboy body! <laughs> uh... And so she takes her glasses back, but of course, hiding. Negi sneezes, and uh, Tasame goes uh, from this bunny suit. to this. Yeah, not something you really want to um, have happen to you on a consistent basis by your teacher or boss. Uh, 
that's not when 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 everyone was uh, like, oh, it's just Zave, and and it's like you're wrong. I don't know the Afrikawa. I'm not her. Uh, and that saw this chapter. Uh, the next uh one thirteenth period uh focuses on Nagi's interaction with twins uh Fuka and Fumika, uh, the I- identical twins created. That's Fumika and that's Fuka. I believe uh. Fuka is the older sibling, and Fumika is the youngest. Is the youngest. Uh, so this one is kind of like uh, Negi's being given a tour of the uh, campus. Okay, yeah, I was right. It says the older one is uh, Fuka, the younger one is Fumika. Uh, and so uh, Fuka and the the this and this for re- your reference is Moho is like. Mahora City, I guess. For, for the, this is like the whole campus, a European city ish. It's, it's, it's the setting. This is where our, our story is taking place right here. Uh, uh, to the right is the residential district and our dorm. Straight up the hill there are the university facilities and research institutes. On the hill are all the school buildings, the junior high, high school departments. The shopping district was European, so the academy town was built to match that style. You can see Lavar Island way over there. And, yeah, I'm the... What the fuck kind of funding does this damn school have to do this shit? But, funds, all these something like that. Uh, so, Negi is greeted by the twins, and he, they said that, they are, uh, that they'll show them around the academy since they're in uh, the strolling club. Uh, and so, uh, they kind of take Negi on a tour. They show him, like, the basketball, the, the gym, and pool and the cheerleaders and everything and uh Negi kind of treats them to like sweets or whatever and he's all like uh I think he was kind of like thinking of them like he thinks of Anya like his old friend Anya uh where they're like more like little girls that aren't concerned with like love and like romantic stuff like that uh, and then finally the last stop on their tour is the uh world tree they call it uh which is this big ass tree right here uh, it, you would see it in like the last page I showed you. Uh, oops, wrong, wrong, sorry. Uh, this thing right here is the world tree, so you could see it from this big landscape type thing. Uh, and they said it's supposedly been here since before the academy was even built. Uh, and they said there are a bunch of like uh, legends about the world tree. Like if you one says you tell somebody you have a cross from them, and if you like them, they'll, they'll fall in love with you. Uh, and the chapter kind of ends with both of them kissing Negi on the cheek. And Negi had previously written in the in his uh, little uh, student notebook kind of thing about the twins, like little like notes about them, but they changed them. And I, I'm, I'm not going to read them. You can go uh, buy the manga and read it yourself. And that is straight from the twins. Uh, the next chapter focuses on the class rep, uh, and then there's only one more chapter after that, and I'll get into, like, my thoughts on this whole, on this line, the whole, app, right afterwards, so, sorry for covering them up. I'm gonna find a new way to, uh, do this whole review thing if I'm not just, like, splitting the whole speaking, I'm probably going to just kind of do a brief overview of what's happened in the series, not chapter by chapter, kind of just overall for my next, next time I do this, uh, so... That'll be that. Uh, yeah, so, 14th period focuses on the class representative, Ayaki Uh, and, um, thinking back on, uh, Love Hina, because I haven't read any of Hannah Lost's other series, like, I haven't read, uh, Hey, I Love You, uh, I Got Tomorrow and I in Japanese, uh, or any of his other series, uh, but, uh, Negima and Love Hina, which I, like, he will talk to that or Nicomas in this at the moment. I've also seen it, but the I guess the rich girl or the, the character of the class rep isn't one that I have seen too that I haven't seen in Kenogwatt's previous uh, work. I actually I'll take that back. I did read a little bit of A I Love You. Uh and from there I didn't get any vibes of this type of character, uh, uh, but, so, uh, and it says, uh, no, it's in her screen profile, 
Second daughter of the Yukihiro Zaiba, the owner of a business monopoly formed during wartime. Beautiful appearance, clear-headed, ranked number fourth in the class. And that means her grades are fourth from the top of the class. So she is pretty damn smart. And then as the final note, is madly in love with Neki Sensei. So, uh... <laughs> mm. Oh, she has the same birthday. She has the same. Uh, she's born on the same day as my mom. Hmm. Imagine that. Uh, so the chapter starts with like a flashback. Of... Sorry, a flashback of um when uh, Suna first transferred into their class when uh, they were in uh, elementary school, uh, and right from there the. Two girls have had seemed to have had uh, been at each other's throats, and Ayaka lives in this large, large mansion. Um, and this is her her mansion because you know we are rich folks; they have to have the big fancy ass houses. So that is where she lives, uh, and of course. Negi's come to visit her, I guess, like, a uh, summer break, I believe. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's something similar to that. It's like a, 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 her, uh, like a day off from school or something like that. And so Negi's come to visit, but he is brought up, uh, Asuna and Konika with him. And I, I, I just love the interactions between Asuna and Ayaka. Like, they just bounce off each other so freaking well. Uh, but so, uh, Ayaka shows them around uh, her house. Uh, uh, and then like, she asks, like, why he's here. And uh, Negi, uh, he kind of turns to Asuna and she's, like, kind of hinting, like, don't say what, you know, you're, you're actually what he says. I figured I should get to know you better. Uh, and so, Ayaka uh, continues to show him around the house, and, uh, she says, like, in just in case he arrives, she says, uh, I think, uh, in the anime, it says that I had bought out, like, all the tea companies or whatever, uh, but here it says, the pretty thing is, I have tea from around the world, you can have anything you see here, I mean, anything, and she has, like, this whole, uh, spread for him, uh, right here, uh, just kind of in preparation of when Negi Sensei comes to call, kind of thing, uh, and, uh, it's here where it was kind of ended the, Suna kind of also knows her way around the house, where, she, uh, <laughs> she says, okay, let's leave Scott or Harlot for now and go to the entire number of the pool is this way. Um, uh, and so, Asuna and Konik, and they all go off to the pool. Uh, not, of course, the classroom has the big indoor pool in her own house. And uh, so, one of the 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 maids kind of walks in on her, uh, what appears to be her kind of seducing the teacher or trying to. Uh, and. Uh, uh, yeah, it kind of goes in, like, a little bit of backstory that she, like, she and Asuna have been on terms with one another for a while. Uh, like, that we insulted each other's hobbies, sabotaged each other during, during test or athletic meets for seven years, we were, like, cats and dogs go in the water, strum and drying, whatever the hell that is. And it's that, and Negi notices, uh, a room across, the uh, window across the hall is filled with, uh, toys, and, and he's like, is that your sister? She says, that room is vacant. Uh, anyways, here's some cookies! And two of the, two of the, the incoming maids uh, look of horror. Uh, and, uh, she says, uh, I'll be your sister while you're here. Uh, and as uh, she's choking Negi in her breath, and, uh, uh, Suna, they kind of, uh, she and Suna kind of get into it again, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, so Suna and Konika decide to kind of leave and just, uh, let Ayaka and Negi 
do as they do. Uh, and Negi's like, yeah, coming here wasn't really my idea. It was the soonest who wanted to cheer you up. I uh, said, uh, and it's here that we learned that, uh, uh, the class rep has a bit of emotional bag behind her. She was going to be an older sister, uh, 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 but, uh, the child died, uh, uh, at birth, and so it really, it really made her sad, and so that, the day that they came to visit, it was in, celebr it was kind of in celebration of her younger brother's birthday, I guess, you know, Negi, because her younger brother would be, if, if the brother had lived, he would be the same age as Negi is now. And so that kind of gives uh, uh, kind of a reason as to, or kind of puts a new light as to why the class rep is so fixated on Negi, because uh, he is everything that she would want in a little brother. She is the prim and proper and respectable young boy uh, who is mature for his age and has good taste and everything, but is, is still overall a child. And so, looking at it from that light, it doesn't come off as she is a pedophile and, like, a borderline child molester, but it's more like she sees him as the brother that she very well could have had. Uh, and so it ends with her in tears, uh, kind of, like, just kind of thanking Asuna for uh, doing that for her. Uh, the last chapter focuses on, uh, uh, it kind of focuses on Konika, and, uh, and uh, he get, Negi gets a letter for, from his sister, uh, asking if he's found a partner there, and, uh, he says, oh god, more exes, uh, according to old stories, we would have passed on to the next generation, uh, uh, it's traditional hope that wizards who are active in society will find a, for want of a better word, mate who will, you know, watch their back. Such a, such a partner is called a Minister Magi. In fact, you can't be considered a Magister Magi if you have no partner. Uh, and so, uh, kind of a... Uh, the best kind of... Uh, it, it's pretty similar, like, if you've seen Slayers, it's kind of similar to uh, Lena Inverse and Gallery, their kind of relationship where he is the warrior, who handles things for the most part physically, where she is a spellcaster who kind of saves the background and fight. Or actually, it's more equatable to Zero No Kaima, where you have Louise, who is the maid who stands in the back and casts spells and everything, and Saito, her familiar in this case, playing the knife partner who kind of takes care of all the shit physically while giving her time to do all that. Uh, so, I, and I'm guessing, oh, okay, now I'm guessing, I'm kind of telling what. Uh, and Konika kind of comes in and she's like, so pretty much you came to Japan to find a lover, is basically what it translates to. And it's like, well, our class alone gives you 30 to choose from. Uh, uh, so she goes off, she like rugs out the door, it's like, everyone know you came to Japan to find a lover. And of course... The twins are outside the door listening in, and the war and it spreads like wildfire throughout the class. So all of the girls are like, "Oh my God, he's like a prince or something from a faraway country, and he's coming to make one of us a princess and a wife and all this." Shit. So everyone's kind of like, "Pick me to be your princess or lover or bride and fiance and everything." They're like, when's the royal, royal ball? <laughs> and he just takes off running. And as soon as he rounds the corner, he flies into the air and runs into uh, Konika, who is uh, on the run as well, but all fancied up, as you can see. Uh, 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 sh uh, she's on the run from her fiancé. She is uh, an Omi-Eye. Uh, uh, okay, I need to actually check into... Uh, uh, okay, oh, okay, that's right there. Uh, Negi's like, what's an omi eye? Uh, and she's like, an omi eye is a marriage partner. Basically, you go out on arranged blind dates helping, uh, and hopes to find your future partner. And her grandfather makes a 
hobby of this, she says, where he sets up like all these blind dates for her in the hopes that she'll pick someone. And Negi, like, it says, like, these guys are all pretty handsome. They're doctors, lawyer, lawyers, and they're, like, twice her age. Um, and Konika says, it, it not, it's not too serious at the moment, but it does kind of, like, it plays very well in the Konika's character, where she says, I'm still a kid, why, I, why should I have to decide on a husband right now? Uh, and she says, I'd much prefer you, Negi, as my, as my partner. She's like, I can tell you'll make a handsome man. It's like, so there's some say foreigners make the best partner. And it's like, I'll help you determine the, the ideal partner, because Konika is the president of the fortune telling club. Uh, and she's like, your partner's a human coach. You've gotten close to this girl over spring break. Uh, you've already seen her panties, and that, like, uh, from getting to know spring break, that narrows it down from quite a bit to about one, two, three. Four, five, then it was five, and it's like she has ponytails and twin bells, whatever time once the girls into the rough, and obviously as soon as that she can dance. Uh, so, uh, and she's like, it's kind of a joke, but you know, they have getting along, been getting along better together. Uh, and it kind of ends with. Konika in the, you know, you've seen my panties position kind of falling over things and kind of showing her ass. And, uh, the chapter ends in chaos and picking people and whatnot, so. It was a very, it was a, it was a, it was a funny volume. Uh, like, reading over, like, kind of skimming over this now, I really do kind of realize how funny it, it is. Like, just kind of looking back, I'm like, oh my god, that was hilarious, or at least I find it hilarious. And so, like, the next session is kind of like character notes. So, the first one is Chisame. And uh, the, it says for apparently that her original name was going to be Chiu uh, Hasegawa. And she was going to be more of like the traditional idol singer. Like, if you know anything about like Japanese idols, you kind of know what I'm talking about. But basically, idols, I guess the typical sense, I, I guess I should have kind of explained this. What in her chapter is such a thing, I don't really know so much about it. Know a little bit about it. Uh, idols are basically in the best, in like the most general sense of the word, they are very typical to like here in America. We have like our teen type pop stars like Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez. There, there are they are basically that they are young girls between the ages of like. Fourteen, and like their early twenties, who are portrayed as like cute and happy and peppy and charming, and they have like this, and they are able to sing, and they release albums, and they model, and they take part in like uh, a bunch of like little social service kind of things, like blitzy shit. Uh, and most of the time, they're really talented. Like, a lot of, uh, like, there are some idols that are, like, still, uh, kind of working today. I believe Ikari Tamara, but do not quote me. Like I said, don't quote me on this, because I do not know for sure. But I believe Yukari Tamara, who uh, is one of my favorite Japanese uh, singers, was an idol and is still an idol to this day. Uh, Yui Horie might also be considered to be one. Like, you know, Ashley, let me check, because I'm here on the, com on the computer anyways. Uh... Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, uh, popular Japanese singer voice acts, uh, the radio show, uh, so, okay, so she's not quite an idol per se, uh, but she, like, I guess she first did the video game and everything, but it's, it's, Kind of, uh, it, it's basically that. But since I'm on Wikipedia, I guess I can, uh, kind of, uh, Google it and, you know, and just kind of, uh, okay, Japanese idol. Uh, uh, in Japanese culture, idols are usually female, media personas in their teens and early 20s are considered particularly attractive or cute, and who will, for a period ranging from several months to a few years, regularly appear in the mass media. E.g. as singers for pop groups, uh, bit part actors, TV personalities, uh, models and photo spreads, public magazines, advertising, etc. Uh, uh, 
Um, so, like, a couple of notable idols, uh, uh, none that I've actually heard of, uh, but it, it, but you, I guess, I guess you guys basically get, uh, the, the, uh, the idea. I don't need to go too much more to because I'm already going on now. Uh, okay. But basically, that's what Isame's, uh, original character was going to be like. Uh, twins had a bit more of a rougher look to them, as you can see here. Uh, I guess, uh, and we're going to be named Saya and Fumi Narushima, uh, and there was Ayaka, who is, who was, like, the typical rich bitch type character, uh, uh, and so, uh, let's see, going, like, this idol, what, this volume. What does this volume do? This volume, it it kind of ex it doesn't okay it doesn't extremely expand the universe of Nagima, but it does kind of give you like a kind of a small stepping stone into the bit of a bigger picture. There is a lot of stuff here mentioned in this volume and in the previous volume that are kind like kind of like and mainly in this volume they kind of become little itsy bitsy foreshadowing plot points kind of for much later volumes. We'll get into that with my, when I do the third volume, which is where the series really starts to pick up. Uh, overall, though, the comedy in this is, it is wonderful. Like, you saw, the video, it, the video's gone on for almost an hour, so you saw that I was having fun and laughing throughout this whole thing. Uh, next volume review won't be this long and hopefully drawn out, but it'll be shorter and a bit more compact. Uh, but, um, I, I really, I really did like this character, this, this volume, it, it focused, uh, it didn't, I like the characters it focused on, I liked seeing their backstory, especially the first time, and looking over it again, I really liked doing over it again, and kind of like, I'm like, oh, I kind of didn't like him, because there, there isn't a couple, there isn't a whole lot that I didn't notice, but there was a few stuff that I, that I did kind of, like, re-pick up on and everything, uh, yeah, that I, and some of us I just found funnier overall the second time reading it. Uh, but it kind of... It kind of sets the stage that Negima isn't really like this... Really... It, 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 it kind of makes Negima appear to be this... Really funny, magical, romantic comedy type thing. Which, which it definitely is. But it also kind of promises more uh, serious development uh, for uh, some of the other characters involved in it and and that's what I that's what I really really love about it um, so uh, if you liked the first one then go get the second one I guess I'm, I, I think I might have done a bit of a bad job at kind of advertising it because uh, I just spoiled the entire thing but I'll try to do better about that in my next one uh, so, uh, I guess that's all for this segment, uh, in the next couple of weeks, look forward to a bit of a change of pace with my review style, uh, I finally got a, uh, audio recorder for my computer so I can, so you're not just looking at my face on the with him for, like, 30 minutes to an hour, uh, but, uh, uh, but that will be, like, my first type of review for that will be one of my new favorite series, but I still need to finish it, and I will finish it this, ne this next week upcoming. Uh, also, uh, I have decided to do a top 100 favorite female anime characters list, which I will also use, be using my audio recorder for, so I'm not just talking to my webcam for, and you can... For like an hour, but and you can look forward to my part one of that numbers, uh, 100 through 90, uh, within the next couple of weeks. Uh, so this has been your flashback, and see you later. Thank you for joining me for another review. I hope to see you again next time.